what's coming up next after a pretty nice start. John McClain, Hall of Fame columnist. John, were you in attendance for the no-hitter, or was that even in Houston? Uh, yes, it was here, but I was watching women's basketball, Kim Mulkey versus uh, Iowa. What a game, highest rated history right now. There's more people talking about the women mm -hmm. Final Four than there are the men. I'll be watching every game, but I kept up with the Astros, who absolutely stunk it up in their first four games here, lost all four of the Yankees, bullpen pen, blew every game, and then they put out a pitcher, Ronell Blanco, who'd only made eight starts in his career, 30 years old, bounced around Astros and minor leagues the last two years. When they signed him in the Dominican Republic, he was working at a car wash. They got him for $5,000, and he comes out, throws 105 pitches, no hits to Blue Jays, two guys, Two, two reach base, George Springer with two walks. It was an unbelievable performance at a time in which they were desperate to snap out of it because they continued to be terrible at Minute Maid Park going back to last season when they had a winning record. The Rangers humiliated them here, and then they start off 0-4. So all you got to do to win here is pitch a no-hitter. <laughs> well, uh, it's easy. Easy, John. Uh, no problem at all. Uh, what do you think about the Rasheed Rice situation and what the NFL will do and what kind of suspension he could be facing? You know, what an idiot. And what got me, and I've watched, I've read every story, I've watched every video, I've watched the dash cam, I've watched other people's kiss, you know, they're selling it to TMZ. And what got me is bad enough to be racing and cause multiple car correct wrecks. But to get out and casually walk by and not check to see if anybody's hurt, any children, you know, I just, I think it's terrible. Right there on North Central, which we all know is one of the busiest freeways in the country, whatever they can do to them, I hope they throw the book at them. Being young and dumb doesn't cut it anymore. And uh, think of what could have happened that carelessness and recklessness and uh, they're lucky somebody wasn't killed and uh boy you know he's got he'll pay, have the best attorney money can buy and probably claim he wasn't driving and it shows him getting out of the car uh but i think the league will definitely suspend him and it's just a matter how long it will be and when they do announce the suspension then he will appeal and try to get it reduced John, we are in the month of the NFL draft. It is finally truly upon us. Uh, what is the, I guess, biggest storyline in terms of the Houston Texans right now? They traded their first-round pick, 23rd overall, the last two pieces of the Deshaun Watson trade, a 23 and a fourth-round pick this year. They traded for an extra two this year and a two next year because their needs are deep positions. You know, they need the Texans need – Another defensive tackle, they need a corner. They need another receiver and a safety. But the two positions they need the most are corners. They have one starter, Derek Stingley Jr., back. He was great, except he's missed at least eight, eight games, I believe. Let's see, eight games as a rookie, and he missed some last season. And their other starter, Stephen Nelson, I guess they're not going to bring him back because he's still unrestricted, so they've got – to have more cornerbacks. You know, the, the, the Rasheed Rice thing, there's video of all of that. You're going back to that, if you don't mind. How much do you think – well, I don't know if, if evading arrest or leaving well, – obviously leaving the scene of a crime. How long of a suspension? You look like four games or six games or longer. I think it could be uh, uh, if they find out he was driving, if they can prove he was driving, and multiple people got out of one side – maybe to show to show you couldn't tell he was driving the car is registered to him and so everybody just assumes he was driving and so i could see six games if somebody been hurt worse but they need to send a message to these idiots that continue to drive fast and speed and endanger other people go out in west texas somewhere on i-10 go to el paso as fast as you want to go but what's happened at georgia including deaths in, mm -hmm. in Georgia and you still see players there in Athens racing it just it boggles your mind 
and how stupid so many of them are. And people probably say, well, when you were young, you would have done dumb things like that if you'd had their money. But I never had, and you guys never had, people within a team telling you constantly what you can and can't do. If you need help, do this. And, and indoctrinating you into the real world when, when you're coming out of college, they just, you know, kind of thumb their noses at it because they've been, they've been treated like royalty and they've gotten out of trouble so many times. So I can't wait to see how this plays out, whether uh, he's in trouble legally. But what I understand, the laws in Texas are really tough. If you are driving a car and you create an accident and you leave the scene of the crime, John, uh, how do you think it affects the Chiefs' draft plans? I think they need a wide receiver anyway. They got Hollywood Brown, but what has Hollywood Brown done? As for a first-round pick, he hasn't been worth it. But if their rice is developed into their best receiver, I think they're going to draft another one anyway because, um, you know, people think Mahomes can work magic with anybody. Well, he has been able to to work magic with a couple of guys, but there's others they haven't. But it's such a deep draft, Paul, with wide receivers. They don't need to use their pick at the bottom of the first round on Xavier Worthy. They can take another position like another corner and to make up for a Sneed, trading him to the uh, Titans and then get a receiver in the second or third round. I was going to ask you about Sneed because they put the franchise tag on him, but Tennessee, I guess, was too much for Kansas City to say no? Well, they only gave a third round pick and something else. They just didn't want to pay him that franchise money. Okay. And they weren't going to give him a multi year deal. I read a deep dive on that team by a respected writer who pointed out they've been planning this for the last two years, knowing they could not p- play uh, uh, their great defensive tackle plus a great corner. So they've been drafting corners. And that's what you have to do when you pay the quarterback the big bucks. Something's got to come off that cap somewhere, and inevitably you better plan for the time when it comes. Like the Texans have another three years with C.J. Stroud, and then they could do a fifth, but you know they're going to extend him before that. But if they're going to win and bring in players right and left, they better do it while they got a lot of cap room. Yeah, John, the franchise well, tag was 19.8 for the salary for Snead if it would if he yeah. would have played for Kansas City this year. Yeah. All right, John, how do the Cowboys move forward then with Dak Prescott? They're going to redo his deal. They're going to lower the cap figure, and I think he'll be there. In fact, I read last week that despite what people are saying publicly, they're working behind the scenes to get an extension done. He's got him by the footballs. He can do whatever he wants. There's no way they're going to let Dak Prescott walk after next season with no compensation other than a compensatory third-round pick and then have to start over after they won another 12 games. And you might get lucky once with a quarterback in the fourth round. You know, if Dak Prescott had Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin and one of the greatest offensive lines in history and Jay Novacek and, and uh, Johnson b- blocking – would the Cowboys be better? Yes. Yeah. They need to work on getting more talent around him. And it's hard, you know, because of the salary cap, CD Lamb and Micah Parsons are going to cost record amounts, but you've got to find ways to maximize your opportunities while you have a quarterback. And that's why you keep redoing deals, pushing that cap on down the road and hoping it keeps going up by record numbers. So did but the Cowboys they- miss their window? Oh, no, there are no, no. Okay. Cowboys, are, you know, if you think about, is there any team in the division better than them? I don't buy Philadelphia's good. Philadelphia's gotten rid of some, some really good players mm-hmm. that I don't understand, like the Son Redding, 27th side the last two seasons. You think Prescott and the offensive coaches aren't happy he's gone? Washington Giants, no. San Francisco's always good. You know, there, there are teams, but Cowboys problem to me, is they just need more talent. Now, for their line was so good for so long, now they're trying to make it better. they got to worry about that. And they've lost defensive players. But I know Cowboy fans don't want to hear this, and my family thinks I'm nuts. Dak is not the issue. Yeah, they, yeah. people obviously would disagree with you in a, a, a pretty large group. But, you know, they, they had two Hall of Fame offensive linemen together, even though Tyron Smith has been beaten up and no longer there. 
They had two Hall of Fame offensive linemen around Dak, uh, linemen around Dak. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, who was obviously a highly ranked, uh, highly picked uh, uh, running back. C.D. Lamb. It's like it's it's not like he's got a bunch of just trash. It's it's I don't know, man. It's 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 nuts. Well, they wouldn't win twelve games every year if they they had trash. The problem, as you guys know, is when they get in the playoffs. And mm-hmm. I think McCarthy is just as responsible as anybody else because they they tense up or something in the playoffs. But um, anyway, I think they'd be making a big mistake because there's no guarantee you're going to be looking at the Sam Darnolds of the world. Marcus Mariota of the world, and uh, hope keeping your fingers and toes crossed you can find another one in the fourth round. It's always interesting. If, if in fact, he was to hit the open market out of the 32 teams, what would be like 25, 26 or so that said, let's go get him? They would, and that's what's going to happen yeah. next year. Let me ask you something as a fan of the commander. Do you, do you want them to take Drake May or do you want them to take Jaden Daniels. The Cowboys are not going to be in that position to draft a quarterback that high without totally bombing out. Jerry Jones can't do that. I am uh, a big fan of Jaden Daniels, and I voted for him in the Heisman Trophy vote. Uh, I'm worried, though, about his he's, – he's a little bit – I'm worried about the size. And I I mean, I, 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 they'll screw it up, John. The, uh, new new personnel guy, new general manager, all of that. I just I'm worried about them picking the wrong one because that's just what they've done. Well, Daniels is certainly Cliff Kingsbury's kind of quarterback. Yep. If we look back at what he's done, so it'll depend on how much clout he's got in that room. Thank you, John. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Sick'em Bears. Sick'em Bears. That's John McClain, Hall of Fame columnist. Before we take the break and come back with